the arts. So welcome to our spring facility service. Uh, before we start, uh, we will we'll begin as always by saying about the values that unite our community to tackle the frontline community. As we thinkers, we do not have a statement of what we all believe, because what we do have is a statement of the values we hold in common as we go together. We welcome all who seek the meaning of life and who believe that human spirituality is wider than any one tradition and deeper than any one set of opinion. With respect to our Christian origins, we seek to explore truth from all sources. Our fellowship gives us strength and encouragement in daily living. We also seek to make a positive difference in our world, and I'll be talking later on about charity I would like to encourage us all to consider supporting as we are able to. But I will now begin as we always do by lighting our chat. And here is our chalice. My apologies for the slightly wonky video angle. I haven't managed to frame it so that both myself and our chalice are in shot, but I have lit it to start our worship today. We have here some chalice lighting from the American Unitarian Universalist writer, Mary Francis Thomas. The Seasons of Life. We are grateful to mark time with seasons, to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, or to gather as family to remember our loved ones. In all our seasons, may we give thanks for the breath of life, ever mindful of the fragile nature of existence. May we live fully in each moment. From summer to autumn, and as winter turns to spring, we gather in sacred mystery and in the bonds of the public community. May we radiate love and care for each other, both within and beyond our walls, this day and all the days to come, caring both for those we love and for those we have yet to meet. May it be so. Let us now hear a little of some spring traditions. These are by the Reverend Tony McNeil, who tells us a little about the origin of spring traditions. And what this time of year means to people who follow the earth spirit and pagan tradition. In the earth spirit and pagan calendar, the ninth of April, and it will be most of this piece, halfway between the Spring Equinox Festival of Osana and the May Day Festival of Beltane on the 1st of May. Traditionally, the country flowers of Osana, which we are now approaching, was the beginning of summer when the cattle were put out to pasture. It was not the full summer, but merely the promise that the warmth of what's done. Cattle would be driven from the barn between two bonfires, as a sign of purification and protection from harm. Quite often at this time, there would be a procession around the boundary of the farm, stopping at points for a fair, and scattering grain to have an offering. Sometimes people would leap over a small fire as the symbol of a new beginning. Osara is about balance, light and dark, night and day, male and female. It's the time of year when the hopes of Gimel, the earlier festival when the first signs of spring are observed, become active. In paganism, Osara is a goddess who is associated with the hair and the moon. The hair, because it is the symbol of immortality, appears to die and be reborn every day. Osara was traditionally a time of celebration for dancing around the maple, courting and hand crafting, which is a marriage ceremony. Tony McNeil comments, I like the hand crafting custom that the hands of the bride and groom are symbolically tied together with a red ribbon to show that they are an item, but then unbound to symbolise that they retain their individuality within the marriage. The time of year has a lot of superstitions and practices associated with in the pagan calendar, it is the time with the earth goddess as a maiden, 
mummy to Greenland, the male dog, symbolising the fertility of spring, to be followed by the growing times of summer and the fruitfulness of the autumn harvest. The ash, birch and hawthorn trees are special to this time of year, with maypoles being made from birch wood with a garland of hawthorn attached on. Bow and berries are put on doors and window sills to keep witches out. The ways were decorated with yellow flowers, and all in all, it was traditionally a tommy twine as the days became warmer and brighter. Traditional symbols at this time of the year are eggs and seeds. The egg is a symbol of fertility and new life, hence the tradition of giving painted eggs as gifts and our modern tradition of Easter eggs. Seeds are also a symbol of the spring at this time to sow them. The traditional colours at this time of year are yellow and green, symbolising light in the yellow light of the sun, and green and growth, uh, symbolising leaves, grass, and the return of plant life and greater animal life as the earth warms and we begin spring. Certainly there are bugs growing on plants in my own garden, but we may even see a couple of roses in due course, which I do look forward to. Today. So, happy Ostara to everybody as we approach the springtime of the year. Now we will have a prayer. This is Spring and Word, and it was written by Frank Walker. We meet together at a time when the earth is renewing herself, peacefully, marvelously, victoriously. No power on earth may push back this triumphant tide of life. Truly, the light is sweet and the pleasant thing it is for our eyes to behold the sun. As we respond to the joyful rhythm of this season, we are grateful that we ourselves are part of this great and glorious ordering. We know that we are maintained by the energy uh, that awakens in a myriad form of life with a generosity that we may never fully measure or understand. We are grateful to you for the unnumbered processes within us, which we do not have to control, but which of their own accord and consciously work together in harmony to make possible our lives. All and seen, the goodness of the air blesses every cell and fiber of our body, while silently our blood circulates to our veins, Food strengthens us and water, so humble and precious and free, daily bestows its vital blessings. We remind ourselves that we are part of the ceaseless web of life, part of the harmony in the eternal song of many. We resolve not to break through stupidity, carelessness, or greed the lovely and delicate strands of life work, not to bring discord and ugliness into the beauty of life. When we bring these things to mind, we begin to understand that in the divine will is our peace, for we sense that the love that rises so falteringly in us is linked to the love that moves the sun and other stars. At the same time as we behold a vision of glory, we are ashamed of our failures and sins. We have the gift of awareness. We know when we have done wrong, lift the mark, strengthen the power of evil. So we pray for the cleansing, healing strength of goodwill, that our powers of thought, imagination, and speech may be well used. We pray for the power to communicate, not in words alone, but in mind. We have messages to give welling up from the depths of our lives, living words that only we can see, loving deeds that only we can do. Grant of all that our communications may be like sowing the seed, and that those who receive them may look to a fine harvest. May it be so. Amen. And now we are due to have an Ostara meditation. This is going to be led by Brian Robson. I am happy to invite them and replace me uh, as I speak. Thank you. A meditation for Astara, 
and by Reverend Tony McNeil. Let us prepare our mind and heart for wonder. Sitting gently, relax in our breathing. Imagine, imagination can take over and we can see a new picture. We are looking at the tree, dark skeletons through the cold of winter, black against the sky, still as if in a painting. And they feel as we feel, the warming of the air. They feel the turn of the earth back towards the sun. They feel the light lingering around them, darkness receding. This day or the next day or the day after, Lights and triumphs again. The trees respond. Stiffness gives way to stretching. The flow of life is returned, easing out into the room. The bells and branches prepare to dance within it. Life force goes to the tip of the good moistness of the moon. Within each of the trees, the spirit is waking. Soon there will be a haze of green around them. Soon the haze will be new, bright green leaves. Soon there will be flowers and blossoms. From all the trees, it is time to choose just one to keep a special picture of. This is your tree. Consider it more closely. See the detail of its shape, the canopy. Your tree grows year by year. An angle changes. One shoot dominates. One direction is Your tree has a shade, but within it there is an unpredictable pattern. Make contact with your tree. Establish a connection with it. Touch it. Feel its energy. It feels yours. To your tree, you can speak or whisper, or tie on a fragment of cloth with your prayer written. Your tree will feel your dream and hold them until you return to them. The tree will hold your sorrow and release you from them for a while. You can promise to your tree. It gives you the energy and the time to change, to renew. Your tree knows you, knows you have seasons of quiet and seasons of growth. <clears throat> you too can have a spirit that grows as it grows. Your tree absorbs your darkness and gives you light. Cherish the picture of your tree. You may know it already. You may have to see quote. You may only have a painting of it. But it is your tree to hold, your tree to bring change and newness to your life. At this time, equinox, spring is returning, and all life is renewed. So is our own. Our shape, too, is the same as we are growing within it, creating a new pattern, building strength from the memory of you. May the spirit of spring bless us and protect our tree. Let us return to the here. Thank you very much indeed for that, Chris. That is a very appropriate um, meeting because we will shortly have details uh, of our charity collection, uh, which is going to be for the Ukraine. Um, so I actually have another meeting I would like to share with you before I and that uh, This is called Tenderly. This is by Joy Cox. Spring comes o'er the promise of spring, and before the sun's new warmth has proved, below the surface of the soil, hope has gone. Tender shoots reach up and out, vulnerable, letting go the protection of hard but or dead wood. Somehow life knows it must it must let safety go, must risk the growth. So with the human heart. The mother reaches out in tenderness to the new life that is her child. 
Lover reaches out to lover, revealing secrets of self as never shown before. I sense your pain and reach out tenderly, with gossamer touch to soothe and heal. The light of touch, no way tentative, only wishing not to bruise your tenderest sensibility. We seek to send our days and safely housed in subs of habit, like a second skin. Then unexpectedly, our human tenderness calls us out, as spring summons new shoes, enhancing eyes and voice and touch, pervading body, heart and spirit. No longer are words weighted, consequences calculated, no longer a partial relationship in us, we would be one. No longer is fragmented life in us, we would be whole. No longer is habituated response in us, we would connect with one another and the one. The tender shoots of our spirits reach up and out, trusting in life despite its chill, drawn by life to life more abundant. This is the transforming gift of tenderness. And that's the fine choice box. We will have the notices at the end of this service uh, after I can finish this movie. But now I would like to talk about our collection for today uh, and what the Unitarian Church here in Castle would like to make a donation to. All of us are aware of the situation in Ukraine. Uh, the National Unitarian Movement has put out this statement, which I would like to read to you, because what we are asking for is that if people are aware, are able to do so, they might consider making a donation to the Red Cross's Ukraine appeal. There are historic links between the Unitarian Movement in the UK and the Red Cross. It is a charity we have supported for some time, and at our last General Assembly, we passed a motion uh, to support, formally, formally affirm our support. Uh, for the Red Cross uh, and uh, its interface uh, collection. But this is the statement. The General Assembly of Unitarian and Free Christian Churches stands in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. We condemn the unjustifiable attack on this country and call for an immediate withdrawal uh, of Russian forces uh, and an immediate ceasefire. We further urge the UK government and the bold administration to offer whatever humanitarian aid is possible to prevent catastrophe in the region. Safe corridors for the passage of civilian refugees are now an urgent priority, and we urge the UK government and the bold administration to offer safe refuge and a haven to those fleeing this war. Warfare causes terrible suffering reinforces social inequality and causes incalculable environmental damage. We resolve to prioritise peace and peacemaking in our Unitarian worship and culture. And this is a message from our President, Anne Mills. Some of you may know Anne Mills because she has said worship here for us on several occasions, and we shall be welcoming her back here in the near future. As President of the General Assembly of Unitarian and Free Christian Churches, I endorse the sentiments of horror, apprehension and fear aroused by the recent Russian attack upon Ukraine. On behalf of us all, I send messages of solidarity, sympathy and support to the people of this war-torn country. We are thinking of them and praying for them in their time of need. And we are glad that their neighbouring countries are freely offering them help and care in their suffering. Many of our chapels are organising vigils which we may join, either in person and or in spirit, and I know that our prayers will bring encouragement and reassurance to Ukraine. And I should add, this is me speaking with you, please, uh, that recently our Congregational Connections lead, uh, Lizzie Kingston Harris, has organised an online vigil uh, Ukraine, the Unitarian to join in. That will be this Friday, the 18th of March at 7 o'clock. I will be sending around details of that by email and I'll be putting them on our website. Uh, if you're, no, I think most people here are online, but anyone who is not, uh, you are welcome to call me and I can find them. And also, as please remember that we may be able to help tangibly by donating funds. 
He determined that long to board the third cost as a way of providing relief in disasters, raising over £115,000 in the last 10 years. And you can, if you are able to and so to, donate online to support humanitarian work in Ukraine. Uh, she provides a link and I will send that down. There are also ways to donate which are not online and again I'll find details of them. And some food. Let us all help in whatever way we can. No contribution is too small or insignificant. Thank you for your empathy, your efforts and your hope. With very best wishes to all. And no, President of the Unitarian General Assembly. And now our final reading, which I love, perhaps rather egotistically because I'm contributed to it. And this was put together by the Reverend Kate Brady McKenna and many other Unitarians. Uh, Kate put out an appeal on Facebook for everybody, on what everybody thinks of when they think of the promise of spring, and many of us responded. Uh, feel free to see if you can get um, what um, my contribution was. This is spring by Reverend Kate Brady McKenna uh, and members of uh, the Unitarian. We have many springs. We see the promise of spring even in November. Spring from November, that promise is given to us more clearly in January. And we see it in February. An imult in the beginning and in the middle when the geek arrives back at the lake. In early March, news tells us that we are in meteorological spring. And in late spring, spring is shown to us again when the vernal equinox stands springing forward, let us feel spring. And the coming of April proves to us that it's here. We feel the delight of spring even into May. Spring from November, spring until May. We have many springs. It's baked in the calendar, and it is not baked in the calendar. It has everything to do with the weather, and it has little to do with the weather. It is the warmth of the sun, and it is lightness, and it is temperature. It is the longer days, it is high blue skies and white clouds. It is a quality in the air. It is a feeling, a feeling we know and which goes beyond words. It is a taste, a freshness, a clarity in the air. It is the desire to stop and breathe in, rather than the need to put your face in your scarf and bush. We have many springs. It's when we don't have to defrost the car. It's the cream eggs appearing in the shop. It's leaving our hat, our scarf, our gloves, our big coats at home. It's watching Pump and Start of Tawny Phil, which I his name has probably totally mangled, uh, the groundhog, believing that he might predict the weather and knowing that he does. It's wearing a t shirt outside. It's drying the washing outside. It's swimming. It's swimming outside in water warmer than the cold tap. It's lunch on the garden bench and it's tea in the morning. It's getting up in the light and driving home without the car light on. It's evenings which are light despite the snow and hail. We have many springs. We see it in birds as they start to fly to and fro with twigs, ready to build their nests as they sing their hearts out, as they feed from our garden feeders, and we see it with the first evening fighting of a rabbit, or if we're really lucky, of a hare. The frogs in the pond and the lambs in the field tell us that spring is here. We see it in snowdrops, beautiful winter flowers, but winter flowers carrying to us the news that hellebores are not far behind, and daffodils and crocuses and primroses and tulips and fillers are following them. It is knowing there will be bluebells. We see it in trees as they bud, we see it in cactins, we taste it when we nibble fresh or thorn meat. Far from home, it is the flowering of tulips. We see it in the ground as the garlic sings forth, reminding us that the earth will feed us. We have many springs. We feel it in our very soul. We feel it when we think of Adran on the moon. And it is intuition. We know it in our body and our spirit. It is the lifting of our heart. Lift up your heart. We lift them up unto the sun. It is the lifting of our hearts. We feel it when we start to expect rather than to 
it is meant, it is candlelight, it is Easter, and like Easter, it is, it is Imog, it is St. Richard, it is the Equinox. We have many streams, and now our final word. Put out our chalice. And as I put out its physical flame, may its might remain within us until we are able to gather once more. Here is our final word. A blessing of darkness and light by American Unitarian Universalist author Amy Booker Morgenstern. Delicate branches at night surround the light of the moon. Leopard is the dark in which our dreams stir and are revealed. Leopard is the dark of earth where seeds come to life. Blessed are the depths of the ocean where no light shimmers, the womb of all earthly life. Blessed is the light into which we awake, the light that sparkles on the water, that calls the tree forth from the sea, and calls the shadow forth from the tree. Blessed are we as we move through darkness and through light. May it be so. Amen.